you always see on the TV and they go, I've got the trauma surgery, I've got some trauma going on. A resultant from an accident, i.e. in a hospital in a trauma ward. But I couldn't, um, I don't think I could say in words what it is. A sort of a shocking event that happens to someone uh, that affects them psychologically. Upset. Bereavement. Divorce. It's the effect that a horrible event has on a person. A physical injury or occurrence. That it might be long-term emotional distress. And the second part of trauma is the memory of, 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 that, of that anxiety. My name is Stephen McCarthy. I'm 62 years old. I live in Folkestone with my two children, Daniel and Fiona. Up to the year 2000, I was a betting shop manager working six days a week. I had a normal active life, social life. I would go to the pub. I also enjoyed fairly healthy things like swimming, going in the gym, playing squash. But after about 2000, I started to realise I had problems with my legs. The circulation became poor. The veins became swollen. I did see quite a few doctors. Uh, they told me about Berger's disease. It's a very hard one for them to actually pick on because uh, the symptoms are very much similar to other diseases, but they thought that was probably what it was. So they took me into hospital at that stage to do some tests. Unfortunately, they realised it was getting worse quite quickly now. My feet started to have um, a change of colour to a sort of blue-red and then it became serious. The treatment really, the only possibilities they have is to try and help the circulation by replacing the, the artery. That, unfortunately, each time they did, they did it three times, my body rejected the um, silicon tubes and the, and the plastic tubes they put in my legs. And um, the only other thing is to because you have gangrene in your feet at this stage, is to amputate. I came home after around about six months. I discharged myself and I really wanted to get home. But um, the outpatient's appointment a month later, they saw that I still had infection, so I had to go straight back in for three months. It was really a case of clearing the infection out of my thighs, which had been opened. So, um, it was a long, slow process. While I was in hospital, the main ways I coped, um, I loved to sketch, so I would have a sketchbook with me. I would do a drawing. I would spend roughly a whole week doing one drawing, so I would spend a lot of time thinking. And the other thing I really did was um, listen to music. Once somebody had brought in a little headset, I could listen to music. Most of hospital life, if you're there a long time, is waiting for meals. You have three meals a day, breakfast, lunch and tea, and there's gaps of time between them. So you're waiting for the next meal. Once you finish lunch, you think, oh, another three or four hours, I'll get a visit, somebody will bring me more food. And um, because I didn't sleep very much at all, you'd get a visit in the night with tea and biscuits, which I really enjoyed about three o'clock in the morning. So your, your day is structured around the meals, and the medicine deliveries are the two things that uh, I found that I wasn't really well enough to read, to concentrate. I would love to have read books, but I just couldn't concentrate on the book. The words were too small on the page. So drawing was an ideal way of spending a lot of time thinking about the drawing. When I came home initially, uh, the family bought a bed for me to have downstairs. I, I didn't have my artificial leg. So at that stage, I was bedridden and my eyes were not working very well, so I was also having trouble seeing anything. And um, I was basically in the dining room the whole time and I had a wheelchair so I could reach the toilet myself, which is next door. So they were, that was my world. The dining room and the toilet were the only places I actually went for months on end. Um, but at that stage, luckily, once the eyes had cleared up after about a month, I could start reading books, which was a pleasure, really. 
I certainly had downstairs adapted. I needed handrails to pull myself around corners. But um, it was later, really, after about a year and a half at home, that I had the kitchen adapted when I was more active. I started to adjust to my new life by getting up and walking on artificial legs. It was a battle for about five months of um, three times a week physiotherapy. It's very hard with both legs being amputated to, um, to balance, obviously, and to toughen the skin around your knees, which takes the weight of your body. Um, once I could walk, then I could, the world was mine, really. Then I could get a wheelchair, get out. The garden was very important to me because it extended my world from just being inside. Uh, it, when I first came home, just opening a window and getting some fresh air in was a luxury. And to actually go outside and sit in natural wind. I remember something that amused me greatly, and I did it once. I sat outside when it was raining. Now, if you think I'd been in, inside for nearly two years, and just to go out and feel rain on your face was wonderful. Now, I wasn't a gardener. I'd always been at work or out at weekends. So it was a new area for me, and I really enjoyed it, took to it. I had handrails fitted and a patio put down and chairs. And really, it was adapted as um, where I could put raised beds, it was adapted for me. Everything was the right height. It's a small garden and a nice sun trap and very quiet. And I, I really think I recovered sitting out there. I enjoyed the sun and the birds. And it was a, just a quiet, safe place to be, really. I became involved in ARC about four years ago when I saw an advert in a local paper. They were setting up a centre for a care centre for disabled people. So my name's Trish Bishop and I'm the Centre Manager for ARC in Folkestone. ARC is a charity-based organisation that provides um, community care for people with physical disabilities and sensory impairment. ARC has been going in Folkestone f since 2010. We started with um, a handful of members on half a day and we are now um, running in our own centre for four days, which we're hope hopefully going to five days soon. And we support about 45 people a week, um, all with different ages and different disability. We organise different activities according to what people are interested in. So we've done painting, drawing, sculpture, we also have taught dressmaking and textile skills, but then in the other rooms we also um, offer activities such as cooking, so we've done lots of cookery courses. And we've also got an IT room and we've been doing filming and animation and and most recently we've all been learning to jive. People who perhaps have been isolated for a long time because they've been at home through operations or um, trauma or accidents, um, it's quite daunting coming back into a social environment. So it's, it's really nice to have a group project where we're all working on a project together. When you've had um, a disability or have a disability, when you've been placed in institutions or hospitals or clinics, quite often what can happen is the only type of people that you have contact with are people who are medical or who are directly involved in your care. So what ARC does for people on the emotional and well-being level is it brings them back into a social environment where they can communicate, have fun, have coffee, have a chat, um, just enjoy the company of other people. If you are suffering from um, depression, um, trauma, stress, um, by coming to a centre where we facilitate all kinds of activities, um, we are encouraging members to um, Look, look at their own self-care, look at the way that they um, engage in society or engage with activities and um, 
promote that that self-care and well-being. During my recovery and the time in hospital, I started to draw. This was something I always did as a younger person, a teenager in my 20s. I did a lot of drawing. When I came to ARC, they encouraged me to paint and draw, so it was just like picking up the brushes again. Although you might see my hospital drawings is quite traumatic, underlying, I'm hoping you can see me in there and you can see a positive side to me that I've always had. I think there are always changes in your personality and your frame of mind by going through a major trauma. I, I'm now much more wanting to use every day more usefully. I, I, I see that uh, it's a short life and we do all die unfortunately, but I focus more on really not wasting time. I wanted to be less worried about silly things, trivial things, you know, if you haven't got the right colour shirt on or, or if the cat's in the garden. I don't worry about things like that. I focus on much more enjoyable things. I see the positives in everything. Whereas before I may have been more stressful, more worried about going to work, earning money, now I don't think these are things are so important. I think you, you see a bigger picture and you also realise how mortal you are, that the, there is a beginning and an end to it. So I wanted to use the rest of it as, as well as I could. The whole ordeal, really, I saw, I focused on the future. I, I thought, I am going to get better, I am going to walk. I use my children as the focus, they need me. I, I kept saying that to myself, I'm, they need me to be a fairly active dad again. So um, I was, that made me determined, no, I never gave up. I never thought, no, I can't do this. It's, um, it's, if you've got a focus and an aim that's important to you, I think you can use that as your crutch, really, and that's what I did. The future is very hard to see and predict, but uh, at the moment, I'm very happy with my life. Thank you.